The COVID-19 pandemic hasn't left us, still lurking in the darkness in India. In China, it has created massive devastations. Millions' lives stand to perish now. The global pandemic of the coronavirus caused by the severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2. The novel virus was first identified in an outbreak in the Chinese city of the Wuhan in December 2019. Attempts to contain it there failed, following the virus to spread to other areas of Asia and later worldwide. The World Health Organization declared the outbreak a public health emergency of international concern on 30th January 2020 and a pandemic on 11 March 2020. As of 27 December 2022, the pandemic had caused more than 657 million cases, 6.67 million confirmed deaths, making it one of the deadliest in the history. Now, the new sub-variant of the highly infectious COVID variant of coronavirus is driving the current surge of COVID-19 infections in China. China is currently witnessing an unprecedented COVID-19 surge and the Chinese healthcare system is overwhelmed. Shortages of the medicines have also been reported amid suggestions that the Chinese authorities are covering up the true extent of outbreaks. The China's COVID-19 surge is being driven by BF7, Omnicron subvariant. The surge follows the relaxations of the China's zero COVID policy after a wave of intense nationwide protests. Projections show that China's COVID-19 situation is expected to get worse through the winters. Now we are in the middle of the winter. The BF7 Omnicron subvariant, full name is BA5717 SARS-CoV-2. The virus that causes the COVID-19 disease has evolved since it first emerged in 2019, just like any other virus. As SARS-CoV-2 evolved, it acquired a number of mutations which led to a number of variants such as Alpha, Delta and Omnicron. These variants further went through mutations to form branches of themselves leading to subvariants. Now every variant has a number of subvariants. The deadly Delta's variant behind India's second wave has up to 200 subvariants. What we know of BF7 Omnicron subvariant in China. Now, it is known that the BF7 Omnicron subvariant is driving the current COVID 19 surge in China. Though the virus is primarily driving the surge in China, it has been found in the United States, Denmark, Germany, France, and India. So, Chinese experts have said that it is much more transmissible than the earlier coronavirus strains. It is reportedly the main strain in Beijing, which is reporting a surge of infections. Now, the BF7 Omnicron subvariants has the strongest infection abilities so far poses risk of hidden spread, according to the Beijing-based expert at Jiun Tang San Hospital, Li Tongsen. Compared with the BA1, 2 and 5 variants detected previously, Omnicron BF7 has more immune escape capability, a shorter incubation period and faster transmission rate. Now, Ton Gaseng said the reproduction number of the, which is called ARO, of the BF7 Omnicron subvariant is 10, where it was 5, 6 for the Delta variant. ARO is a number that measures how transmissible an infectious disease is. The higher the number, the more infectious it is. RO tells you the average number of the people who will contract a contagious disease from one person with that disease. For example, if a disease has an arrow of 18, a person who has disease will transmit it to an average of 18 other people. Though BF7 has very high transmissibility, 
its symptoms are similar to earlier Omnicon subvariants. Now these are fever, uh, cough, uh, you have sore throat and vomiting uh, and in some cases diarrhea as well. What makes BF7 different and concerning? As the various the virus mutates over the time, some of the mutations that the resultant variants and the subvariants occur enable them to work better. For example, the Delta variant is deadlier and the Omicron variant is highly transmissible because of their unique mutations. The new subvariant has a change in the spike protein, a feature that allows it to enter cells seen in other Omnicon stains making headway. It also has a change in the nucleotide sequence, sometimes referred to as the blueprint of an organism, that could cause it to behave differently than other subvariants. These mutations give BF7 some immune evasive abilities, which means it can escape immunity from vaccines or previous infection, according to the microbiology expert, Manal Mohammed of the University of the Westminster. Now, a recent study examined the neutralizations of the BF7 in SERA, which is a component of the blood that should contain antibodies, from triple vaccinated healthcare workers as well as the patients infected during the Omnicon BA1 and BA5 waves of the pandemic. BF7 was resistant to neutralizations driven partly by the R346T mutation. Though BF7 causes concern, it is not having an effect similar to China in the US or UK. Citing recent data, she notes that BF7 amounts to just BF7% cases in the US and 7% in the UK. Now, BF7 severe impact in China could be because of lower vaccinations or lower immunity among people either from lower vaccination rates or fewer previous infections. BF7's high arrow might be due to the part to a low level of immunity in the Chinese populations from previous infections and possibly the vaccinations too. We should of course be cautious about the data from China and it is based on reports, not peer-reviewed evidence yet. Uh, so that will prove to be a statutory warning. China has rejected foreign vaccines and has relied on Chinese vaccines known to be less effective. This has been flagged as possible reason for the current surge in infections. The lower efficacy of the two key Chinese made vaccines became a concern early in the pandemic when the global health experts suggested adding a third sort to protect the older people. Vaccines from the two companies, the Sinovac and the Sinopharm, are based on an inactivated form of the virus. The mRNA, messenger RNA vaccines, by the contrast, instruct the body's own cells to build a replica of a key coronavirus protein to trigger an immune response. Now, what is alarming? Sorry for being a doomsday preacher, but up to 2 million can die in China. This is according to the projections. The projections of the infections and the death in China say that 1.3 million up to 2.1 million people could die in China in near future from COVID-19. These are the projections made by Economist and The Lancet. The Economist reports around 1.5 million Chinese could die based on its model that calculates the trajectory of the China's outbreak under different scenarios based on estimates of the rates at which people become infected, get sick, recover or die, referred to as the SEIR model. Now the Press Trust of India reports, the Lancet report quoting a projection saying uh, that somewhere between 1.3 and 2.1 million people could die from COVID-19 after China reopens. There are also signs that the Chinese authorities are covering up the true extent of the COVID-19 outbreak. Now, Reuters reported that the dozens of funerals took place in Beijing with the funeral staff in the hazmat suite. 
despite China's reporting zero COVID-19 deaths. Now, at a crematorium in Beijing's uh, Tanjiu district, a Reuters witness saw a queue of about 40 hearsays waiting to enter while the parking lot was full. Inside, family and friends, many wearing traditional white clothing and headbands of the morning gathered around about 20 coffins waiting cremations. Staff wore hazmat suits and smoke rose from five of the 15 furnaces, reported Reuters. It also reported that the medicines in certain are the places in China. The abrupt change of the policy has caught a fragile health system unprepared and hospitals are scrambling for beds and blood, pharmacies for drugs and authorities are racing to build special clinics. About how Chinese healthcare system is being overwhelmed that's sad. There will certainly be more Omnicon subvariants developing in China in the coming days, weeks and months. But what the world must anticipate in order to recognize it early and take a rapid action is a completely new variant of concern. Daniel Lucy, a fellow at the Infectious Disease Society of America and also a professor at the Dartmouth Universities, Digital School of Medicine says it could be more contagious, more deadly, or evade drugs, vaccines, and detections from the existing diagnostics that these carry. The closest precedent to what could happen, Lucy says, is the experience with the Delta in India in late 2020 when millions of the people were infected over a short period of time and the deadly strain raced around the globe. While it's not Inevitable, the world must protectively prepare for such an event so that the vaccines, treatments and other measures can be ready, he said. Now, how do you track this? <clears throat> China is closely watching Omnicon subvariants circulating in the country. Uh, Zhu Jenbo, director at the uh, National Institute of Viral Disease Control and the Prevention said, so December 20, at a briefing in Beijing, uh, it has established a national COVID viral sequencing database which will receive genetic sequences from the three hospitals in every province each week to catch every emerging variant, he said. Now, there is little clarity now about the infections and the deaths in China after the country largely abandoned its mass testing regime and narrowed the way it measures COVID mortality. Now, diverging paths, uh, now what these are? Uh, there are two paths the virus could take in China, Omnicon and its hundreds of subvariants may sweep directly through, likely in several waves, leaving no room for other contenders. Uh, it has in the rest of the world for all of 2022. Vaccinations and the infections will boost immunity until eventually the antibodies in populations will help control serious disease. Now, it might be that the China catches up and what comes out is more of uh, what we have already seen. Uh, no one knows. Uh, Kirby Institute who has conducted research among that existing antibodies in some people bind even to emerging variants. Now our antibodies are mature enough to deal with them, that is what the institute claims. The other possibility is that something else entirely develops, much like the way of the original Omnicon emerged in the Southern Africa in late 2021 that could pose a novel threat for the world. Now Omnicon came out of nowhere, uh, Turnbull says, and it made an evolutionary change in a way that's different. If that's the path and it spreads more easily, there might be another parachuting event where it takes a trajectory we do not expect. So what about lagging immunity? The fact that the China doesn't have a lot of previous exposure to the virus could work in its favor 
when it comes to the risk of new variants. In most of the world, the virus has been under severe pressure, forced to mutate like a contortionist to get around existing antibodies. So that may not be necessary in China. Uh, it's, it is a different situation. Uh, now, what, what, what does it really, really, really mean? Now, it is going through a population that doesn't have a lot of immunity. Just because there are more infections doesn't mean we'll have nastier infections. On the other hand, it may give other new variants a chance to take up because there is not such a bar of immunity. That could be problematic if something else emerges. Uh, so, what is our primary concern? This is this is what is the primary concern. Maybe it will go down a different route because it is not under pressure and there is more room to move. It could be a seismic shift, something that's completely different. It may be a low probability, but it is a probability and we have to be ready for that. At the moment, it is crystal ball gauging. Omnicon doesn't penetrate as deeply in the lower respiratory tract or do as much harm as some of the earlier strains. Its superpowers include its contagiousness and its ability to evade existing immunity, a combination that slammed the door on other variants, including those that could have been more virulent. Uh, what about the risk? Not everybody is really concerned. Uh, a lot of evolutionary biologists believe in this. Uh, and they say that the differences in the immunity landscape between China and the rest of the world makes it unlikely that the emerging Omnicon subvariants will have advantages over what is already circulating. Now, with respect to new uh, dangerous variants emerging from China, uh, we are not particularly concerned right now. Oh, this is what most of the virologists say, and they think the situation in China significantly affects the situations uh, everywhere else. Uh, could something out of the blue emerge and cause problems? Maybe. But we cannot predict it and it is not what we expect. While COVID signs has become highly politicized in China, officials there also say the danger is remote even as the Omnicon continues to mutate. So how do you cast the killer? Now, Yet the global uh, pullback from the sequencing COVID could mean a new possibly dangerous uh, variant evades the detections until it is spreading widely. And uh, this will bite us. And this is uh, the, uh, what the World Health Organization says, uh, that COVID-19 technical uh, it is of it. We need to have some eyes around the world on this. And the virus hasn't actually settled down into a predictable pattern. Now, we know uh, that it will evolve or continue to evolve and this notion that it will only become more mild is false. It could and we hope so, but that's not a guarantee. Uh, this is where we are today. Uh, we are still keeping an eye on the way this virus is evolving and let us hope that it doesn't cause the devastation as it did in the case of the first wave or the second wave or the subsequent waves in many other countries. Uh, stay safe.